<laughs> Does anybody have any questions? How do you survive on the road? What How do you survive on the road? Do you come? Uh, what do we eat on the road? Do you come? Do you come with a suitcase full of food, or are they uh, prepared to? Well, sometimes you can, can bring some of your food, but if you're going to eat at a restaurant, Anne is extremely creative. You run through the menu and you see this is, you know, this one is roast beef, this is one of the fish, this is one of the lamb chops. What you do is you pick off all the, the vegetables. First of all, you probably end up being able to get some carrots, you'll be able to get a potato, you'll be able to get some broccoli. Uh, and then if you really speak with a waitress and, oh, by the way, if you're going to deal with oil, don't, uh, don't just say, oh, gosh, we can't get What you do is when you, you first encounter the waiter or the waitress or the chef, you turn in your seat. You take your glasses off, and you look at them in one eye. You can't look in both their eyes. <laughs> and you say to them, I am definitely allergic to a single drop of any oil. <laughs> uh, you can always get a baked potato. You can have uh, food for dessert. There are ways to have it happen, but you don't go out to a restaurant to further destroy your endothelial cells. But it does, it does take creativity. And so what do you suppose happens if we miss a meal? What do you think our endothelial cells will say if you miss a meal? They rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to tell you about coconut milk. You know, coconut has become, has just taken over, and everything has got coconut milk. At least we find that at home. But turn over the can of coconut milk. One fourth cup of coconut milk. One fourth cup has got 12 grams of fat, and of those 12, 10 are saturated. So don't use coconut. However, if you love coconut, don't despair. Because there is a coconut extract. And if you take a tablespoon, a teaspoon of coconut extract and a cup of alternative milk, you have a very good substitute. And the same thing is true. You know, your doctor just always says a little bit of dark chocolate for heart health. Well, a little bit of dark chocolate this is really bad shape. A little bit of dark chocolate is 20, 20 grams of fat and of those 10 of those of those 10 are saturated. So if you love chocolate, cocoa has had the cocoa butter removed but the dark chocolate has got that cocoa butter in to the fat. Any other questions? Yes? Just curious, I mean breakfast sounds a lot like yours but I'm kind of curious, you talked about the uh, oatmeal being, was it cold? No, no, no. What, what, well, what Anne was referring to is the fact that uh, I usually eat old-fashioned oats, but I never cook them into oatmeal. Use them as a dry cereal. Like a okay, so you just There's nothing like right. Just like a dry cereal. Muesli. Or a it's like a muesli, it's muesli without the nuts and stuff. <laughs> 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 Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. 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 What about olives are fine? Say stay away from nuts, but what about almond milk? Oh, almond milk is fine, yeah. The almonds No, oh, almonds are, are pretty hefty in saturated fat. Yeah. Sir? Yes, could, could you comment on omega-6 uh, fatty acids and their contribution? I think that there are two essential fatty acids, omega-6 and omega-3. Nobody in this room will ever be deficient of omega-6. That's, that's almost <laughs> impossible. Yes, but isn't that the problem? Isn't it the omega-6 that's the precursor to the LDLs? Uh, now you, the idea of when we ask you to take away all those oils, you see what you want to have is a, a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. It's pretty much either 1 to 1, 2 to 1, or 3 to 1. In America, it's what? 17 to 1, 20 to 1, or 30 to 1. Not good. Imbalance, hypertension, inflammation, and... Uh, uh, insulin resistance. So uh, if you can, by avoiding the olive oil, by avoiding the other fats that we've mentioned, uh, you find that suddenly your omega-6 is down. And you want to jack up the omega-3. The omega-3 are loaded in green leafy vegetables. The omega-3 are loaded in flaxseed meal. The omega-3 are loaded in chia seeds. You're not going to be deficient. Omega three, when you're keeping that in mind. Where did the glass of red wine sit for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I know that was.
was Bill. I know that was Bill. <laughs> uh, you know, I have no problem with alcohol on Saturday night. night. But if uh, somebody says i got to have three glasses of wine every evening to relax me, call me. <laughs> alcohol is a toxin. It's a toxin to the brain. It's a toxin to the heart muscle. And it's a toxin to the liver. So you don't want too much of it, but <laughs> certainly Friday night, excuse me, Saturday night's fine. Yeah, sometimes oh. Friday night. If any of you feel you just can't do this, that it sounds too hard or whatever, or you aren't a cook, there are, there are these, some videos by a man named Jeff Novick. It's called Fast, one is fast food, and the other one is fast food burgers and fries. He is so, he is one of the top nutritionists in the country. And he is so funny and so much fun and he, it, it, it makes it all so easy that you won't believe it. I strongly recommend these DVDs of Jeff Novick's. Fast food and fast food burgers and fries. I think we can, uh, we can take four more, four more questions. Yes, sir. Uh, vitamin B12. Yeah, the only supplements that I would really say, uh, I would change that from what our book originally said. Our book was originally was uh, vitamin D and calcium and, uh, excuse me, vitamin D, calcium, and B12 are all 1,000. A 1,000 international units of D, 1,000 micrograms of B12, 1,000 milligrams of calcium. If we drop the calcium, we drop the D, we drop the multivitamin. Because there is increasingly data that show that when you take these, I mean, there was a, I think it was in Denmark, there was a marvelous study of people taking multivitamins every day at an earlier mortality. Your body knows how to extract the micronutrients in food beautifully and safely. On the, on the other hand, on vitamin D, uh, I think it's probably important to have sometimes just have your vitamin D level checked so that you know whether you're in the normal range or not. If you are in the no, low normal range of vitamin D, fine. If you're too low, take either 1,000 or 2,000 international units of D3 daily until you know what it takes to kick you up into the low normal range and then keep it there. I don't want you to go to the high range. That's, that, that may be problematic. Uh, but B12, yes, yeah, 1,000 micrograms. <coughs> I forgot to tell you about parchment paper, if you all don't know. This is so amazing. If you put this in your pan, and then you put, like, cut French uh, potatoes into French fry strips and put it on, it, th these make the most stunningly good French fries. You can't believe. Parchment paper doesn't tear. It, it helps brown the bottom. I mean, I just love parchment paper. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not against sprouting. Would it be better to steam it as opposed to boil? Either way. I find steaming greens turns them sometimes gray. And I find that boiling them, and when I go to places and see really good greens, they boil them. I mean, you know, collards or, or kale. Now, it doesn't mean you can't steam them, but boiling is cool. <laughs> Just on that. Uh, the question is about superfoods. Yeah, particularly the spirulinas and the chlorella, the blue green algae and so on. Yeah, I, I think it's that's fine, but I wouldn't sort of think of that as, see, well, the, the pitfall that we have in so many areas in science, with our journals, and with medicine in general, is we tend to be a little bit too reductionist. Every week there's going to be some new thing that's discovered that is going to be the last word, and yet, you have to always think back, how do the Tarahumara, how do the Papua Highlanders, how do the rural Chinese get by without, they don't ever take any of this stuff, and they're just eating, whole food is grown. That's our message tonight. You want to try to have some of these other superfoods that are probably more expensive, I mean, that's, that's, I think it's okay, but do not do it to the exclusion 
of the big picture here tonight, which is to eat food as grown. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Every single thing that we feed you tonight here is fat. It's got some fat in it. Fat and lettuce, fat and broccoli. Really? Yeah. You. Have you ever heard of anybody eating this way who was fat deficient? <laughs> <laughs> so, in your type of diet, you get enough fat to get the fat Do you know what the, the Tara Kumara Indians eat? They eat the three sisters. Beans, corn, and squash. Absolutely every nutrient that is needed is there in plentiful amounts when they've been checked. Yes. Um, I noticed that uh, you didn't discuss rice at all in your huh. menu. And <laughs> we, we never ground rice. I mean, I, I, I just didn't. I, I didn't okay. bring a lot of okay. stuff. And, uh, and you had the tofu there too. Is that yes or no? The tofu. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, brown rice, love it. I mean, there's so many different kinds. There's black rice. There's red rice. I mean, there's thousands. Okay. Short grain, long grain. Go for it. Love them. Um, Tofu. tofu. We don't eat a lot of tofu, but one of the things I did find here was that you do carry this uh, silken, to uh, the light, firm, Mori New tofu. I found this in uh, Sobeys. 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 Yes. And my favorite dessert is, which we don't have a lot, but we have it for special guests. One of these, three tablespoons of lime juice and the zest and a third cup of maple syrup. And that makes the most amazing, <laughs> amazing lime mousse. And then you put raspberries, mousse, raspberries, mousse, raspberries with a mint leaf in a wine glass. And it's gorgeous, and it's so delicious. And by the way, this, our, our son, our son rep, has come out with a line of food that you wouldn't get here because it's only sold through Whole Foods. Is it often on his site? On the edge of no, and it's not available, I don't think, on his site. But he has crackers and tortillas, and he has an almond milk, and he has wonderful cereal that sort of combines all your cereal. And uh, anyway, they're, they're sold through Whole Foods. He, he was a professional triathlete, became a firefighter, and then became sort of a healthy ambassador for Whole Foods, and they have asked him to do this line of food. So I brought these, not for, forgetting that, of course, that's not here. Yeah, well, it's in Ontario, so we may be getting Whole Foods is in Ontario? Yeah. Excuse me, can you repeat what you said about avocado? Because I always thought avocado was a superfood. Uh, <clears throat> for the patients who have heart disease, I think you really because avocado can be pretty habituating and it's obviously very delicious because it's so high in fat. I'm a little cautious about that in patients who have heart disease. But for those who don't, uh, I think using, uh, again, using, I even for patients who don't have heart disease, I have no problem with their eating a few nuts or avocado. But if they are going to do that, they want to be sure that their cholesterol without medication is in a safe range. Well, I don't think you've ever heard of me ask anybody to have flaxseed oil. We've talked about flaxseed meal. Yeah. Yeah. But your oil is no good. Flaxseed meal. <laughs> <laughs> Could you say something about uh, getting a proper protein balance? You know, let me make the, I think it's gotten a little too complicated here. Now let's be sure about one thing. Remember I said that the Tarakumar Indians are eating three sisters, beans, corn, and squash. They're absolutely no nutri nutritional deficits. And I think in eating, I want eating in Sydney to be like it is in, at our house in Cleveland, Ohio. It's absolutely spontaneous and uh, it's joyful. I mean, that, it can't be done with a, with a computer you know, or an adding machine. I mean, eating has to be spontaneous. All we want you to do is to try to eat from the category of foods that isn't going to hurt you in any way and can really help you greatly. Uh, but I, I think the idea of 
you, when you mentioned about getting the right amount of balance, that's what the body does so beautifully. You feed it the nutrients, it'll take care of the balance. I mean, the body is an absolute symphony of trillions of cells with trillions of reactions. Each cell has a membrane with all kinds of capacity to react to it. And if you think for a minute that we have some great way of outsmarting, <laughs> outsmarting that, no, but if you just feed it the right fuel, the rest will take care of itself. Yeah. Yes. When people change over to this diet and they've gone from eating a traditional American diet to switch over, how long do you tell them? Be, like, will they go through a time that they don't feel great? Like, well, how long can people expect that? To Everybody's last? different. Some people feel absolutely feel great right away. But the, the thing we want to really uh, would you be months? Really, or really, weeks? No. Weeks? Months? <laughs> <My turn. laughs> I think what we, what we want to really do is to have people understand that when you give up this degree of fat and food, the Manel Chemical Census Center in Philadelphia, which has done studies on this, can find that when you have uh, uh, subjects eating different levels of fat, 34% typical American, 20% significantly lower, and then down 11, 11 and 12%, which is where we are. Only one of those groups, after 12 weeks, has completely lost their craving for fat. The one of the 11 or 12%. And that's why we believe, I believe in playing hardball right off the bat with everybody when they come to our program. I don't want them to sort of gradually try to get into this, because gradual means that you're not down-regulating your fat receptor. You're not down regulating the fat receptor, then you're constantly in the situation of craving, denial, misery, and then we have recidivism and we've lost it. Yeah. Two more questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the question is, if you went strictly on the diet, how soon would you be able to get off the medication? Uh, maybe I didn't make it clear earlier, but what we try to do is we don't try to steal a patient. Anybody that comes to see us, the dimension of care that we're working with is to try to have the patients understand the power of plant-based nutrition. And they will know, by the time that we've gone through this, they will know that uh, that as they're blood pressure comes down, as their cholesterol comes down, as their blood sugar comes into line, that their physician and or themselves, you know, the equation of lowering the insulin or those medications, uh, they will be able to reduce those sensibly as it's indicated. And if you were to, everybody is totally different, the rate at which this can, is going to happen. But uh, it does happen. Well, thank you very much. Thank I think you. Ann and I are going to.